I would like to explain that I am indeed prejudiced. Am I prejudiced against black people? Am I prejudiced against uh, Chicanos? Yes. Why? I don't think it's a fault of mine. I believe I'm prejudiced because Chicanos, Latinos, uh, have, have illegally entered this country and are draining this country of its resources, in my opinion, and are voting illegally. I'm prejudiced against them. I believe they brought it on themselves. I don't believe it's my fault. I believe it's the same as my prejudice toward bicycle riders who wear white shirts and black ties and travel in pairs. I'm prejudiced against pairs of bicycle riders who are well-groomed, who are usually white, always white as far as I can tell, and are um, very polite. I'm prejudiced against them because I think they, they're, they're probably Mormons. Now, I would be very happy to have Mormons living in my neighborhood, in my community, and in my country, because Mormons, if I'm not mistaken, are some of the most law-abiding and civil people, more civil than me. Okay, but yet, when I see a pair of well-groomed bicycle riders wearing white shirts, who are um, usually young, I guess always young, I think they're always young, they're always about 18 or 20 or 22, 24, um, I don't want them to stop at my house again, please, because I'm not interested in the Mormon religion, and I'm frankly appalled at the way they have swallowed hook, line, and sinker, what is obviously, to me, a cult. But, however, again, I myself uh, was sucked into a cult. Me. Yes. Me. And uh, I remained um, ensnared in this cult for decades, even after they kicked me out. I was emotionally bound psychologically bound to this cult even though they unfairly and erroneously accused me of wrongdoing and treated me badly I remained captive to this cult now I've changed subjects if you haven't noticed I'm not talking about prejudice anymore I'm talking about captivity I remained captive to this cult even though I was excommunicated even though that wasn't the word we used in my cult, we used the word disfellowshipped. I was disfellowshipped. Okay? I remained ensnared, psychologically bound to this cult, even after they kicked me out, after years passed, okay? And finally, I on a, had an occasion to crawl back, begging forgiveness, and to my astonishment, I was welcomed with open arms to this cult, which in the past was very authoritarian, very strict. They apologized, and the minister that I first talked to said, Who kicked you out? And I told the name, Mr. X. And he said, Mr. X will apologize to you. And this was really strange, because even though I really liked these people, they really were in the past, back when I knew them, uh, more or less like a Gestapo. Uh, not, no offense intended. And I didn't mind that, because I was looking for structure, for direction. You know, that's what I wanted. I didn't mind it. I didn't rebel against it. Okay, excuse me. I'm trying to burp because, frankly, I'm eating popcorn and drinking beer. Um, and I'm trying to explain to SS teacher that I can talk fast on those rare occasions where I know what I'm talking about. Um, when I came back to this church, they had changed so dramatically. You know, if you're away from somebody for a decade or so, you can really see what has transpired during your absence. Kind of like 
seeing a kid when he's five and then coming back and seeing him when he's 15, he's changed a lot. Even though to those who see him every day, this change is not obvious. It was this change in this cult that I was a part of was very obvious to me. And I couldn't handle it. And they were exposed, finally, in my eyes, as um, being false. They were erroneous. It was not the group that I thought it was. And I wanted no part of them. And I bailed out. And uh, went through a period of adjustment that lasted a year or two, during which I was very confused and uh, depressed. And finally came through it. And so looking back, I can say that I, myself, uh, was sucked into a cult. And frankly, I don't know why I mentioned that, except I'm trying to prove to SS teacher that I can indeed talk fast if I know what I'm talking about. Goodbye. Thank you. Normally that would have taken me about 12 minutes to say. <laughs> And I would have had to cut out, let's see, two or three minutes to bring it down. I, and I should have cut out like five minutes, but I don't know what to cut out, so I just cut out stuff at random. I do edit my tapes, or my um, recordings. I do edit my recordings. I think I'll edit this one. Nah. Because it's beer time. And I'm just trying to show uh, my viewers a little bit about who I am. And now we are going to close this little episode of the saga of Opchidexio in less than seven minutes.